Good evening. Today is Thursday, October 4th, 2018. Welcome to the Ruben Hoare Library Board of Trustee meeting. Tonight for public participation, we are interviewing four high school seniors for a position for our Ray Grandy Memorial Scholarship. We offer this every year. Um, just a little bit of information about the scholarship that the trustees offer is as follows. Um, we select an applicant who shows exemplary community service and uh, appreciation for the library to perform 150 <coughs> hours of service to the Ruben Hoare Library, and which results in a stipend for them to use towards uh, their future college oh or trade school. Yeah, so, no. so we have four applicants here, and if I could have each of you just uh, introduce yourselves to us trustees. Um, I'm Tori. I'm Sarah. Okay. And um, for the sake of time, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask a question and give each of you an opportunity to answer it. But first, I'm just curious to know how you each found out about this scholarship. Where did you hear about it from? I was doing the um, summer reading program, um, and uh, one of the, uh, I think her name is Caroline, but I'm not sure, um, she told me about the program, and, oh, Catherine, it was Catherine, That's Catherine. Right. sorry, <laughs> uh, so she told me about the program, and so I, um, I was a junior then, so I couldn't apply, but I decided to apply. Yeah. Uh, I believe I heard it through an email from our guidance counselors that sent it out to our grade, uh, like just to let us know that, hey, this is a scholarship opportunity. Excellent. Okay. My uh, mom had mentioned it to me when she first heard about it, mm -hmm. so then I applied. And I had heard about it I think sometime last year, okay. um, also from my mother. And we actually have, not everybody's from Littleton High School. I'm Asher, you're from yeah. Parker. And um, there's, who, I'm sorry, who's from, uh, there's another, Lawrence Academy. Yeah. Sure. Oh, excellent. So it's, it's good that we have a variety of schools who have, um, who are participating in this uh, application. All right, um, okay. Does anybody want to open up and offer a question to our applicants to, to answer? Sure. Okay. Um, I'd like to each of you to just sort of quickly, uh, or as briefly as you can, um, give us sort of a, a memory or an, a piece of um, either a memory or a fact about your experience with the library. Like what, if you have a favorite memory in the library, if you spent time here, if you haven't spent time here, maybe something about a, a library in general, about this one, just some, some library related memory that you have? Um, well, for me, um, I'm a sort of bookworm, so mm -hmm. I love the library. And um, my favorite memory here would probably, well, I would just probably just be whatever I, because um, during the school year, I just never have time to read when I want to. Um, so they're probably my favorite memories. It's just in general when I get to come here at the end of the school year and, you know, pick up a giant stack of books and start reading. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to say, this isn't just one memory, it's, it's been an array of occurrences. Whenever I'd come into the library with my family, I would always take so long looking at all the books, mm -hmm. and like so long choosing which yeah, ones. <laughs> and like, I remember, it, it was a thing in my family, like my parents would never bring me into the library if we didn't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have like one specific memory that stands out to me, but I remember like when I was younger, my mom would take me and my three brothers to the library over the summer, like at least a couple times a week, probably. 
and we would just spend the whole day in the children's room. We'd each get a big stack of books, and we'd sit down somewhere and read them. Um, and they would have, like, the dogs come in that you could read to. So I always loved reading to, um, I think her name was Maya. Yep, Maya. She's like the big Newfoundland. <laughs> would sit in a beanbag chair, and she would, like, rest her head on me, and I would just read to her for, like, 20 minutes. Um, I am a big fan of the temperature of the library in the summer. <laughs> it's very nice lit condition. Um, but beyond that, I think when I was like seven or eight, um, I got my library book bag, which um, made the transition from carrying as many books as I could in my arms to having a finite number, as many as I could fit in the bag. I had my little library card attached to it. Um, and I still got it in my closet to this day. All right, I'm happy to ask a question. Uh, what's the last book you read? Um, mine was One Day in the Life of Ivan Tesinovich. Sorry for the pronunciation. Um, we had to uh, write a book review on it. So. For school, it was yes. an assignment. What's the um, last book oh, you read okay. for pleasure? Uh, for pleasure? Oh, um, can, I, can you come back to me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tori? Um, um, it would have to be a David Bowie made me gay. I, I forget how, I was like downstairs, like way, way downstairs, like uh, in the nonfiction section, yeah. and I saw it on one of the bookshelves, and it's like, ooh, I like that one, because it's music and uh, LGBT stuff, which is like great, it's a great intersection of my interests. Right, okay. And what was the last book you read for school that was required? Um, <laughs> the last book that I read for school was Pride and Prejudice, mm -hmm. which I did like that one. Yeah. Sarah? I think it was Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Oh. I remember all of my friends were reading it, and one of my friends had the book, so they were lending it out to everyone. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait a couple of weeks. <laughs> for my turn to <laughs> um, But I read it during a fireworks show. Okay. I just read it like that evening where I was really into it. And for school? Uh, the Metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. um, a book that I'm currently reading is Shoe Dog. Um, it's the autobiography of Phil Knight. Mm -hmm. And it's. Um, a bit of school, a bit of uh, personal reading, because it's uh, for a project that I'm very much interested in, but it is a project that I'll be looking at over the course of the year for school and uh, graduation requirement. Um, a little more recently, there was a copy of Art of Racing in the Rain that was getting passed around, and I'm someone who's known to reread books, so I had passed it around and had gone to probably three or four different people. And by the time it came back to me for me to pass it on to someone else, I wanted to read it again and see if my opinion on it had changed at all. Um, Did you come up with your... Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a dark prophecy, very hard. No, oh, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. You had to, had to catch up on the series. <laughs> um, could, could each of you maybe just <clears throat> spend a second or two uh, telling us what your interest is next year, okay, what you're, what you're looking at doing, and maybe if you've chosen a school, you can let us know that too. And if you haven't, that's fine, just, you know, a little bit about where you, what you're thinking about, what you want to be. Yeah, I have not chosen a school just yet, um, but I would love to go into neuroscience, neuroscience. or um, psychology, the brain sciences. Uh, I am very interested in going into music therapy, and I have three schools picked out. Uh, there's one in Boston, there's Berkeley uh, in Boston, and Appalachian State in North Carolina, and Colorado State in Colorado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really want to go into animation or film, oh, okay. and my top school right now is Mass Art, but Leslie's a close second. Did you say Leslie? Mm -hmm. good, good school. It's <laughs> all are good schools. Yeah. <laughs> So I know at the end of a graduate program, I want to walk out with a degree in physical therapy and be able to go into that field, which means that for the first four years in an undergrad, 
program, um, I would have to be going into kinesiology or sports sciences, human sciences. Um, and as far as schools go, I'm whittling down a list. Uh, a lot of which are state schools because I'm hoping to be able to run ball in college as well. Right. Um, preferably with a D1 team. Yeah. Not easy. Not easy whittling it down. No. 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 Thank you. What do you do for fun? Uh, I read. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also do taekwondo, and um, I do classical dance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When you say you play music, you play an instrument? Yes. What do you I, play? I play flute, oboe, keyboard, uh, and I sing. I have a ukulele. So you're a real underachiever when it comes to music, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I can't even spell ukulele. I'm trying to write it down. Is, how do you spell ukulele? U K U L E L E. L E L E. I was close. <laughs> Well, I do theater, which I've done since, like, sixth grade. Um, I like to go into Boston and just spend the day there. And I also work down on the Cape as a camp counselor. So I do get paid for that, but I've been going there for years, and it's a lot of fun. I love being there. What, what particular camp? It's um, Camp Favorite. It's a Girl Scout camp. Okay. Cool. They named it Camp Favorite? Yes. That was smart. Because <laughs> yeah. so, if it was cramp, uh, Camp Lousy, yeah. no one would want to go. Yeah. I think it was named, they had like a naming contest back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. so I guess this was the favorite choice of all of them? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a good name. And I think you could relate. It's not always fun, but I run. Mm -hmm. um, long straight lines for getting into the cross country season so everything's ramping up um, and that takes up a lot of time. Um, I also listen to a lot of music um, and recently I found out that Spotify does a thing where they'll track how much music you listen to and they'll make like a personalized playlist mm, yeah. for exactly your oh. interests. Um, like down to like beats per minute and artists that are related to artists you might like. Um, so I've been really into that playlist recently. Hmm. Do you have to pay for that? Uh, I don't. I, I know I have premium. Um, I don't know if it's a everybody. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll have to look into it's that. Spotify.me. <laughs> Got it. Um, I just want to add that I like any arts. So drawing, painting, and um, singing, of course, I like. Even though I want to go to science, I love all the arts. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what will be expected of you. Um, you'll be asked to do shelving most of the time, and then sometimes you'll be asked to help programming. Um, <coughs> programming is, as you saw in the application, 150 hours. Uh, we like to make sure it's extended into the at least the beginning of summer to help to so help with summer reading. Um, so my question is, well I have two questions. One is, what do you think about that time commitment? What type of hours do you think you can contribute to the library on a weekly basis? And also, what do you hope to gain from this experience once you're done? Um, so, I think about, if you ask me this, like, for a timeline, that I can definitely do evenings. Um, usually, um, my schedule varies a lot though, so I, I don't think um, if it would have to be like a consistent, um, that would uh, that would work. But I'd have to. I would always let you know in advance if something comes up, because um, I'm, I'm doing actually doing a theater production, so especially if I have, like tech rehearsals and things like that, um, or. Um, I'm going to New York actually in the spring for a kind of call performance. So if things like that come up, I would also let you all know. Um, and the other part, what I um, so from this experience, I um, I mean I've always wanted to actually come and volunteer at the library, um, but there was never an opportunity for me to do that um, until this uh, scholarship. And I'm not really looking, you know, f not really f 
doing it for the, the money or anything like that. It's just more of um, kind of an experience. I would like to, before um, I graduate and I go to college, you know, I'd like to do something for the community and, you know, help the library because it's really helped me through a lot of things. So, yeah. Well, the books have. <laughs> the library has the books, so. <laughs> Um, I think I can definitely do the 150 hours. Uh, I could work on weekends pretty consistently. Uh, I usually have a commitment Saturday mornings, but like Saturday afternoons, I'm free. Sundays, I'm free. Um, okay. We'll have to open on Sundays. <laughs> okay. And I'm sure if I have any uh, like spare time throughout the week, I can like come in then and help you guys out. And I really want to do this intern, or it's not an internship, the scholarship. Mm -hmm. I really want to participate in this scholarship opportunity because I, I loved this place as a kid. And like I sort of want to rekindle that love. I fell like just out of the habit of reading recently just because of busy scheduling. And so I really like, I'd really like to spend more time just around the books and and really just giving back to this place that was like really cool for me when I was younger. You're so old now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can definitely do 150 hours. I've been working it out like to figure out how many hours I could probably do each month and still make it in time. Um, but I'm free. On what, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays mostly, from right after school until like the evening. Um, I'm also free Saturday mornings and Saturday evenings. So I think theater is like right in the middle of the day. And there are probably a couple of days where I wouldn't be able to do it, but I would let you know. And I want to do this because, like, the rest of us, we've, I've gone to the library since I was a very young kid. I love this place, but I haven't been able to go as often recently. Just I've been busy with school stuff or theater or like anything else. Yeah. So I'd like to spend more time here before I go off to college because I don't know if I'd have the chance to come as often. I mean, hopefully I'll only be over in Boston, but realistically I wouldn't be able to come here every day. Yeah, um, I tend to have a relatively uh, strict schedule, and it tends to be just about the same week to week. Um, it doesn't help that my Sundays are wide open, <laughs> um, but I'm sure that uh, if there was a way to work out hours, uh, I get out earlier from school on Wednesdays, uh, and I'm sure that if necessary, I could work something out with my coach in order to make sure that I would have time after school. Um, because Parker starts a little bit later, we also get out a little bit later, so we're out at 3.30. Practice tends to go until 5.30, um, which means I get home right around 6. So uh, on nights that it could work, I'm around during the week. Wednesdays, I'd end up getting home uh, probably around 4, so there's a whole lot more time on Wednesdays. And Saturdays tend to, there are some invitationals that we have that were either for indoor track traveling to Boston or for cross country and uh, track traveling around you know, the greater Middlesex County area. Um, and as far as why I want to do it, I know I didn't write about it uh, as much in my essay as maybe I wanted to, uh, but I've been volunteering with Parker in a way. Uh, they have it built into the schedule so that one hour a day uh, is potential service time and you're assigned a teacher at the beginning of the year so uh, last year so you start in junior year it goes into your senior year you're supposed to do 70 hours and then 60 hours um, and I found absolutely no issue with getting it done basically you just you know you walk in you say what can I help with they give you something to do and I think it's the absolute least that I could do and I know that uh, though maybe a little bit selfish I feel really good about helping other people <laughs> I have a follow-up question to, to Sam's question. He mentioned that primarily what you would be doing is shelving books. 
Um, just so you're clear, that's a cart <laughs> with books. You're pushing the cart, you're taking the book off, you're figuring out where it goes, and you're putting it on the shelf. It is potentially a mind-numbingly boring thing that you'll be asked to do on a regular, I'm just telling you this. If, if you think you're going to come to the library and sit at the front desk and greet people, or sit on a couch and read a book, that is not what, we need your help, right? The, the staff are already overworked, and that sort of service that you could do for the library is the sort of service that we used to have so-called pages do. And we don't have pages anymore because the budget doesn't accommodate that. So just so you're clear, it's you don't get Sam's job. You don't get to sit in <laughs> Sam's office and answer important emails. You will be doing something which is critically important because the books need to be in order so that people can find them. But it is, it's not going to be a thrill a minute. With that in mind, are you still interested? And it's fine if you say, yeah, I thought it was going to be something different. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. It's, it's important for us to know that now. So is, is that still something you're willing to do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I kind of like those meticulous tasks. Um, okay. um, you know, when I, would come to, when I come to the library, I have a list that I want to get. It would be like a kind of game to see. Like, what is the book, okay. you know, last name, I, th I think it's, I mean, sure, it may get ridiculous at times, but there's always ways to make things fun, even most boring tasks. Yeah. Tori? Yeah, I am still interested. Uh, I actually do, uh, I sell books at the school library whenever I need to, whenever Miss Hines is, like, so overwhelmed with, like, other things, because right. she does a lot there. And like it's just it feels good to be able to help her out, and I'm sure that I would get that same feeling from helping out the librarians here because it's like the same situation. So I'm still interested. I'm perfectly fine with shelving books for a while. Okay. Um, I mean, it could be boring at times, but I like organizing stuff. It won't be that bad. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I did 80 hours of service last year with Parker, 20 of which was taking uh, like physical paper copies of race results and putting them into Excel spreadsheets so that my coach could look at them without having to open a drawer and find the actual date. So as far as the meticulous tasks goes, um, it's very much doable. So I, I just how, well, how, I just wanted to point out that even though the shelving could get <coughs> monotonous, mm -hmm you will find some very interesting titles yeah. when you're putting those books back. Just don't spend too much time. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, another piece as well is that you will be asked to you know, like dress in a nice way and present yourself as a member of the library staff community. Um, my suspicion is that you'll have a little name tag that you'll be asked to wear. Um, so there might be people who will say to you, uh, I need help finding something. We would certainly ask that you can be as helpful as you can, and if you can't get them what they need, that you would grab a, a staff person to augment whatever help that you could give. So you will be very visible to our community. So um, that's another thing to bear in mind were you to be awarded the scholarship. OK, so you're all, you're all applying for this scholarship, OK, to work at the library and just, just You've all, you've all mentioned you know, how busy your schedules are, so maybe when you leave and you go home, okay, go online mm -hmm. to the website and read our hours, because they're the same every week. The only time it changes is when there's a holiday. Okay, so that will give you an idea of the hours that we have that you can fit into, okay? And my second question is for Asher. What's the mouse problem? Did I misspell something? No. I just want to know what the mouse problem in the sports shed was. Oh. <laughs> um, so we had uh, a near plague of mice and ticks. Oh. And we ended, so it's, it's this old, like, shack of a shed. It's oh, okay. like two by fours by two by fours, um, held up by more two by fours. <laughs> um, and oh, yeah. what we had to do is I got... I think it was 15 hours for this project because we ended up pulling everything out, 
um, which is all the soccer stuff, baseball stuff, softball stuff, everything. track stuff, everything. Uh, we found a grill back there that we didn't know that we had. And it's like <laughs> industrial size. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, pull everything out onto the pavement, uh, clean everything on the inside, get rid of the ticks, the mice, the cobwebs. And then we sprayed everything with uh, peppermint and eucalyptus, okay. which are two things that the mice and ticks both hate. Uh, um, okay. And thank you for reminding me because we have to do it again before winter comes <laughs> and the mice are looking for another house. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard enough though. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Does anyone on the board have any more questions to ask our applicants? Uh, I was going to ask what your favorite subject in, is, favorite subject in school is, and why. Um, that's a very hard decision to make. Um. I enjoy um, my theater and singers class. For me, um, I really do. I do enjoy science a lot, um, and it's something I'd want to do in the future. Um, but um, so I'm taking seven classes. So the arts are kind of like it's, um, it's just like a relaxing kind of time for me. I feel like it's it's more of a free time for me because that's where I really. Can just relax and um, kind of enjoy myself. So those are the two classes that I enjoy. The arts, yeah. All right, big shocker. I like my music class. <laughs> <laughs> I take an AP music theory course online, and I also take band. Okay. So this is hard. But, um, <laughs> I think my two favorite classes are AP Studio Art and creative writing. So an AP studio art where we have to make a portfolio for the year that we'll submit, but I get to just, for an hour, like do still lives, or we just finish some blackout word poems, and do different types of art that I might not otherwise have the chance to do. And then in creative writing, we've been doing scenes, so we haven't gotten to like full short stories yet, but every week we'll write a new scene with like sometimes we'll have a prompt for it, but it's fun to just see what I can come up with and read what my friends come up with too. So Parker does the project based learning. And so far, in just about every class, we've done all the background knowledge, and we have yet to receive a project. So nothing's too bad yet. Um, but I'm really enjoying stats, because we're getting to pull our own data sets. Um, so for example, last week, we spent some time looking at a data set that I pulled that was on height of men in assorted countries in 1850. And then just oh. like, yeah. So as far as mind numbing goes, that's right up there. Um, but. I, so far, I like it a lot. Just one, maybe one last thing, if you each could just tell us something that you feel like we need to know to make, I mean, we've got to make some decision here all can we, fault, so. Sorry, can we start with Asher on the end? I do. Oh, this is yeah. <laughs> one, sure, one thing that you. We keep choosing to share to go first. To decide. Um, now I see the pressure of going first. <laughs> um, I would say that I'm, I'm a relatively so social person, and uh, I know that the work of shelving books and shelving books and shelving books would just be uh, a lot of time by myself. And I just want to let you guys know that at any point, I am more than happy to, a to help those who would come up to me and ask for something, um, because to talk with someone for a little bit would be really nice. <laughs> Well, unlike Asher, I'm not as much of a social person, <laughs> I'm sure some of you know. Um, so a little alone time stacking books would be great, but I'm just as open to interacting with people. And I know plenty of people in town. I'm sure people would feel comfortable coming up to me to ask for help. Yeah, um, I definitely have experience with shelving books as well as with helping people find books like in the high school library, which is significantly smaller. But I'm sure I could find my way for at least a little bit of uh, Reuben Horror. And like the same thing as uh, Sarah, 
uh, the alone time, like stacking books, I think would really help me, especially after like a really long, stressful day. It would just be a nice, relaxing activity that I don't need to think that much for, and so I can just sort of chill out. <laughs> um, well, uh, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity. Um, and I, I would love to come here and uh, help out this, I, I said this before, um, but I don't know, I think books are just a wonderful thing. Um, and to be able to help out the library, um, even if it's, you I mean, stacking the books is not, um, it's, it seems like it's not that important, but, you know, to find a book in this, so many books, it's really important, so I think doing that job, um, and anyway, just helping the community in general, I like to do that. I actually don't know many people in the Littleton community, so I think that would be a great opportunity for me to um, meet some new people and I think you know whenever I come here and talk to the staff um, you know they're always so uh, welcoming and you know they ask me about my day my school year and um, if I would like to do that with other people as well you know make them feel welcome here as much as the library did that for me so, yeah. I, I have one quick question that's not at all related to this but when you read a book what format do you read it in do you take a paperback, a, a hard copy, or a Kindle, or the overdrives, or audiobooks, or what's your preference? Um, I actually, I don't really enjoy audiobooks as much. Um, I feel like, uh, for me, it just kind of takes, when someone else is reading it, it takes away the way that I imagine it. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but I really, I like mm -hmm. pages. Um, I like to, I like the feel of a book. Uh, I think it's, okay. I I like I'm a visual kind of think, learner, thinker, so whenever I read it, um, I can kind of visualize what's happening, but if someone else is reading it to me, I don't know. I don't get that same feeling. Um, I definitely prefer like physical books. I don't, it doesn't really matter for me if they're paperback or hardcover or not. And it depends on the type of book if I also like uh, listening to the audiobook as well as reading the book. Like if I'm having trouble getting through the book, if like the language is like like stopping me or something, then the audiobook playing like as I'm reading can really help. That's an idea. No, that that. I've done that before in some books. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, that's cool. I'm definitely a physical book kind of person. <laughs> Um, like I also don't care whether it's hardcover or paperback. Um, I've tried reading like on a Kindle or listening to an audiobook, and I just don't get into it the same way I do as if I have like a physical book in front of me. I know it's easier to focus on it and just really get invested in the characters in the story. Hardcover all the way. <laughs> I know if it's in the bottom of my bag, and I've got you know all my other folders, my laptop on top of it, and I've got to keep my lunch in there somehow. Like it needs to have some kind of spine to it, other than just like flimsy paperback. <laughs> because I think every single uh, paperback book that I've had from school, I've ended up having to buy because what ends up happening is like I'll put another book in there with it, and it'll get folded back. Yeah. <sighs> It's curious because most people seem to think that the younger, your age folks would pref want everything online, right? And, and it's unanimous. <laughs> so. well, that's nice. That's refreshing. Then you, most of you like books. That's good. So um, the next steps would be after the trustees um, choose one of you. Um, you would meet with me or Andy Curran. She's the head of circulation. And we'd figure out a schedule for you. Um, when you come in and um, give you your task. You'd mostly be working with Andy um, or other staff members, but she'd be giving you your direction of what to do. And then, um, yeah, and then at the end um, of your, you, you also keep track of your hours. We have a log book so that you make sure that you, and you make sure that you have your, all your hours in time. It's due by, you have to do 150 by July 30th. So you have quite a bit of time left. 
um, just don't let it get away from you. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then the trustees will probably probably meet with you again, and um, we'll, uh, if you did well, we'll cut you a check, basically. Yeah. So I'm, and would anyone like to say anything else? I, I would like to thank the four of you to come in, for coming in. I mean, these, wow, I mean, these were excellent uh, answers. And I know I've just really enjoyed hearing what you had to say and um, hearing about your interest in the library and books. And prepare to hear from Sam in the next few weeks as to uh, what his decision is. You will hear whether you receive the scholarship or you do not receive the scholarship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was nice to meet you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, that's a heavy one. Oh. <laughs> I actually scare. This is not even happening. So. Thank you. Good night. Good that was really pleasant. Mm -hmm. Did we award three scholarships one year? We did two one year. We had three applicants three one candidates. year. Three candidates. We had three candidates and we picked two one year. Okay. Um. Okay, no, I'm all set. So we're going to move on to correspondence. And of course. Oh. Oh, shoot. Approval of minutes from September. Oh, approval of minutes from September sixth, twenty eighteen. Page three, there's a spelling error on the bottom of the page in new business. Uh, Ruben should be R E. to approve the minutes of September 6th, the meeting minutes, with the correction that has just been made. All in favor? I'll second it. Second. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> second. I'll second. All in Chris. favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Treasurer's report. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this will be brief. Okay. We've waited. Uh, let's see. I guess... I guess uh, those departments over there have been in some distress with all the new software um, or whatever it is. I haven't heard everything, but they've been in some kind of distress about uh, the computers and stuff, getting everything all set. So there was no Barth there was no Bartholomew last month. Um, there were no balances last month. Um, there's no Bartholomew this month, but I have the balances. So the building, the building fund is $417,026.05. The operating budget or operating uh, account is uh, $1,310.88. And that's the treasury report. Um, I don't know what it is with the Barth. Uh, I don't know if Sam's heard anything through the great behind uh, It's nice. Yes. It's just taking forever so okay. for everything to get transferred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Friends report. All right. I attended the friends meeting on the 19th of September. 
Um, they are having their book sale uh, on October. Some of the dates. 20th, maybe? 18, 19, 20. 20. Eight, yeah, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, I, I would encourage trustees to sign up for the shifts. Um, there's $992 the friends have in their building fund, which will be transferred to us at some point soon. Um, okay. Uh, Oh, the friends are very much in need of new board members. So um, if anyone is interested in joining the friends and becoming a member of their board, they are welcoming of new members. Um, anyone in the general public? Anyone in the general public, not on this board. Yes. Uh, say I contacted Sam Park, who is the uh, real estate developer at The Point, and he and his operating director um, agreed to let the friends put the library book sale banner outside the point which is great oh, nice. so that'll go up on uh, Sunday October 14th so it'll be up for the week leading up to the um, well, to the sale so it's great um, there's some discussion about read past my bedtime again event at the library because it had been such a hit uh, that's being looked at as sometime in November. Um, I need to check the stock of the I Read Past My Bedtime t-shirts, um, but I did find out that the printer who did them last year can print in glow-in-the-dark ink. So that's a huge, I don't know what, that's like <laughs> a, a game huge, a huge <laughs> game changer. So that's it from the friends. Correct? Right. Oh, right. oh, you weren't even there. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> but good game face, though. You're like, oh, I totally know what happened. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Fundraising Public Awareness Committee report. Uh, Sam and Chris and I attended both of those. And due to the fact that the same people who are on the Public Awareness Committee are also on the Fundraising Committee, we have decided for a time to combine the two meetings together since the business overlaps anyway. So um, I don't know, uh, Sam and Chris, do you want to add anything about what was discussed at the two meetings? Um, well, I primarily, Sam and Demetra weigh in if you feel like it. Um, primarily the discussion at the last meeting, which was on September 15th, was about the uh, building community event, which is going to be on November 3rd um, at, in Acton at the Open Orn? Door Kitchen. Open, Open Door, Door Kitchen. Kitchen. I was trying to remember the name of the location. Um, so the... Orange Door Kitchen. Oh, sorry. Orange Door Kitchen. Oh, sorry. Orange Door Kitchen. Orange. Orange. I, I thought it was, I was thinking Orange, yeah. but it didn't sound right. Okay. I knew it was OBK. I was thinking of that Orange Therapy. I'm like, that's not right. Um, so the promotion for that event has already begun. It's already sort of gone out on Facebook. There were um, invitations going out to um, so select um, community members. Um, because there's a limited um, capacity for the space, um, they're hoping that um, people who are interested in um, supporting the library will be among the ticket buyers mm -hmm. um, and that really that was the mo most of the discussion was about that event and sort of planning the event the tickets and the promotion um, we also discussed a little bit I think the, the the book sale was mentioned and some other things were mentioned as well but it, that was the bulk of the discussion yeah. Yeah. The golf in the spring too I think there was I have a little more to add to that oh you do great um, so uh, this is an update of from Sarah, as of today, there's been eight tickets sold to the building community event. Great. Um, and the building community event has 19 pledges that they've received so far for $16,550. Wow. Um, and according to Sarah, and th they have the little green light database since the fundraising kicked off in January of 2017. The friends and trustees have raised $177,338.50 in donations. And she says 59,130 59, of that is outstanding pledges. Um, it does not include the mini golf or t-shirt sales, but does include the bake sale. So. Great. Great. Thank you. 
Okay, that's that slot. Uh, Amy Tarlow uh, Lewis is also being trained to use the camera for LCTV and oh, has been right. trained since September 25th. So we're hoping to do a series of short um, tapings uh, with featuring Sam, like PSA Sam like and, and, and members service. of the trustees of as well as <laughs> library patrons talking about how much they enjoy and love the library and yeah. so expect those in the coming months and she and I are also working with this website called Canva which is free for nonprofit agencies and it's uh, advertising uh, templates that you can use through social media and there's a lot of really great designs and Chris is part of it too. Um, so we have just been playing around with different designs for the um, Orange Door Kitchen event um, as well as the trustee vacancy which we will talk about later on the agenda and um, the various other fundraisers and events going on at the library such as the book sale. Also on the fundraising, I, I think we've, the fundraising committee has sold like, um, there's three rooms that have been sold, the naming rights have been sold, and I think there's <coughs> a couple others that are in the works right now. So. Great. Great. Anything else to add before we move on? Okay, trustee updates. Mark, do you have any? Um, I uh, attempted to attend a couple programs. <laughs> um, um, and I think that's about all I had. Uh, well, I was at the um, the town needs assessment um, meeting two weeks ago. Last week, I don't remember exactly. Um, they sent out the request for quotes for the uh, design, the initial design work of. Uh, what to do with this building, whether to build it new, um, um, rehab it, whatever. Uh, they got three proposals back. Uh, they're going to interview two of the candidates next Wednesday, I believe, and make a recommendation at that time on one for the selectmen to hire um, as the OPM for that project. Um, based on the time after the OPM is hired, well, They'll hire an architect to do the next step, uh, similar to what we, it's the exact same process we went through for the library um, um, building a design grant. Um, based on the timeline, it's extremely unlikely that they have any numbers for May town meeting for what um, to do with this building or what. Um, or what even which direction to go? Uh, they probably. I don't know. I don't know how far it'll be. Basic, realistically, you're going to get an architect in place maybe in January or February, just based on, you know, after you hire the. By the time they negotiate the contract, final contract with the OPM, they have to do that before they can post the um, a request for the architect, which has to be posted for a month and another, you know, just the timeline. It's it's going to be January, February before an architect even comes on board. So what state it will be in in May um, right. for the town meeting, if we're planning on going in the May town meeting, which we should decide in the next few months what our, what our timeline is, um, the building will be behind it, will be behind that schedule-wise. So um, the, um, it's unlikely that it's one issue going forward. They're going to have to be separated. Um, almost almost definitely if it's in May um, and um, but the committee generally seems to think that something needs to be done for the library and for this building and it would you know a community center type thing and everything so um, we have a lot of support at that meeting so Excellent. so so no decision as to whether to refurb this or tear it down will be made until after an architect comes on board. Yes, so it will be going through the exact same process we did with the library on the cost of uh, rehabbing it versus um, building new. Um, and it's been mentioned several times 
that you know um, that building you know that they'll we found that building new was cheaper and they probably are going to find the same thing and um, okay um, the other news on that front was that um, the other thing that needs assessment is that the Long Lake Boathouse is not going forward at the moment because they failed their perk test so they're back to trying to figure out what to do so um, that's also been delayed me I was out of the country for for two or three weeks so I, I'm <laughs> totally out of the loop and coming back in so but I had a good time welcome back Thank you. Did you visit any libraries while you were actually? Traveling? Actually, we didn't get to see a whole lot of libraries because the the tours that we're on were on a bus. But I I, I drove by some and took pictures. That's as close as I can get. <laughs> yeah. I do not have any new business or updates. Um, I attended the historic landmarks uh, adult program on uh, the night of the twentieth. Um, it was quite entertaining. It was interesting. Um, they were uh, a <coughs> married couple who travel around and write books about things they come across. Um, so they were entertaining. It was, it was a good evening. It was 38, 40 people there. Oh, yes, yeah, a people. lot of people there. Yeah, it was great. So. Um, I don't have anything from the last couple of weeks, but I want to mention um, that I'm participating in the open house on Saturday for the um, grand reveal of the new paint job in the oh. YA um, the YA section. Uh, Girl Scout Troop six five two two one cadet troop of um, eighth graders uh, have painted the space, and it looks lovely and bright and clean. Mm -hmm. And they've invited myself and two other authors to come and be a part of that grand opening. So starts at eleven. Just starts at eleven one. Eleven oh one. Okay. So you can come and look yeah, at the library and talk to the girls and it's part of their silver award project. Nice. Um, and you can ask questions of the authors and I you're also I believe um, uh, selling some books in addition. So. Okay. Okay. Director's report. <coughs> okay. Um, as Chris mentioned, Girl Scout Troop 65221 painted the teen room. Um, they're holding an open house on Saturday, October 6th from 11 to 1. There will be an author signing with Chris Aslin, Jen Pet Petro, Roy, and Lisa Rosinski. Um, they've also planned a scavenger hunt, and they're going to have some um, snacks available. Um, they're also doing a separate project where they're going to, uh, where they've chosen um, DVDs for. Um, our binge boxes and they've chosen different themes and they've asked me to purchase some DVDs for them. So if they wanted to do something that would be long lasting for the library besides the paint job. And to uh, once now that we have this new paint, the furniture looks not so great. So I am using our furniture budget to uh, replace some of the furniture in there. I'm just waiting on quotes from Demco to provide that. Um, I met with Richard White from Brian Strategies Group, a consultant that the town has uh, hired to um, find a new town administrator. And all the department heads were asked to meet with him and discuss what qualities we'd like to see in the new town administrator, how we feel things are going in town, and how they can be improved, and any upcoming capital projects. Um, Mr. White then created a uh, five page report, which he sent out to um, the town administrator search committee, um, sharing our thoughts. Did you see that report? I did. He okay. sent it to us and he gave us the opportunity to edit it if we yeah. wanted. Yeah, great. Yeah, and I, yeah. Um, uh, in my new role as a member of the MVLC Executive Committee, I've been helping to set new policies, approve budgets for MVLC, approve new hires. Um, I've also been named as li liaison to the Cirque ILL Committee with Andy. <laughs> So that's a lot of fun. a fancy French word like liaison. You feel like, ooh, it must yeah. be something great. No, it's just a lot of extra work. Yeah, <laughs> um, I did speak to Lauren Starr, the building uh, specialist at MBLC, about what's going on with the projects. The Hingham Library, Greenfield Library, and Marlboro Library were the first three on the list, mm. making us number one on the waiting list now. Um, she says that she hasn't heard anything yet. Um, but she does feel she has heard that two of them are going to ask for extensions, so it might 
we might not know in January. We might go into the spring. So, and then I'm not sure about the third one. And she didn't say which two were planning to ask for an extension. We can't, like, call them. So, <laughs> if a library asks for an extension, in essence, the money is put in a separate holding area. Uh, yeah, it's basically, it's still being held for them. It's just that they have a few extra months to go to their town meeting. Okay. But they're Instead just, of going for six months, it's like right. nine months or ten right. months or something. But they just okay. can't go past this, the fiscal year. Okay. I remember that coming up as a possibility. Right. 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 Okay. Right, so it could be longer before we know at least if two of them. So if okay. the third library just doesn't pass, then we know. But, uh, yeah. We want them all to pass. We want them all to pass. Um, Diane reports that 2,058 attendees at summer reading um, over the summer. That's great. And 500 regist 501 registered kids took part. The teen program had 113 participants, and the adult program had 172. And uh, Helen's New England program on the 20th had uh, 30 attendees. Um, so it was pretty well attended. Um, as far as the budget goes, we're pretty much on track. Um, we're doing pretty well in spending away. And uh, it's going well. And then the rest of my report is just stats. So I, I had a couple questions on the budget, the negative amount for the materials we shouldn't be worried about? No, it's, um, it's only $179. It usually comes out of gift anyway. Okay. Um, um, and how is the veterans agent working out in the small meeting room? Uh, so he's, um, he's got a lot of uh, things in there. <laughs> and uh, we've been trying to work with him to figure out how we can move some of those things out and so that the space is clean and we can share the space. Um, so uh, as far as I know, he enjoys working there. Um, and he doesn't really get in our way because we're, it's except for the stuff that's there. Um, Could it all fit into a filing cabinet? No, it's, it's oh. all boxes. Okay. So apparently there are options that everyone is pursuing <laughs> and examining, but okay. it's, it's a slow going process. Okay. And um, the other thing I was going to mention, Meredith McCullough, was it? Um, who was the interim director before you came on, won, won an award for um, something from the Mass Library or something? I forget exactly. Um, but it was a fairly prestigious award. She was announced like person of the year, librarian of the year or something, or person of the year. Um, she was the, the, the temp director we had that lived in Bedford. Um, was announced, was huh. it? I probably shouldn't know exactly what it was, but I hoped you wouldn't would ring your memory if I. So the person before you was super awesome. Yes. <laughs> Fill her shoes, Sam. She was just a temp. <laughs> question but it's just it's, it's interesting to me so in your one of your stats is the self checkout in the children's room mm -hmm. 2833 how long has have we had that up there it's been that long right the self no it's been like eight years the self eight 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 the self checkout upstairs predates sam the one yeah, downstairs might not years, yeah. it's been it's I been was, a long time i'm just curious my kids using it when they were what that was like before 30,000 people could check out what's upstairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Was it like a long line out the door? I mean, I, I just can't even, I just can't yeah. imagine the number of, I mean, obviously that's books, not people, but right. it just, it's, it's enormous. I think it, it frees up the, yeah. the children's librarian to be more resource-based. But I think the kids also love. They love it. They love to go out there and check it out. I just wondered if it, if it like, <laughs> what, because I've been coming to this library since, you know, for 15 years, since Catherine was a toddler, but I don't remember when that transition happened. And so I'm just, I was just sort of thinking about the line that. I want to say the one upstairs is probably, probably about, yeah, probably about eight years, and the one downstairs is probably about five or six. Yeah. Yeah. Just curious. She can still play on it if she, she wants. She loves it. Well, absolutely. I just, but like I said, I can't remember what I yeah. can't remember what the checkout process was like prior to that. Being slower, there. slower. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. I had one other. It's been less fun. That's cool. I think it's cool. I had one other thing, Sam, and I, I know you probably don't have this off your head, but can we get a breakout from the twenty-three hundred whatever people that 
did summer reading on how many of them were from Littleton and how many of them were from other towns? Mm -hmm. Is that possible to get? Uh, I don't know, but I will check. It would probably be a good stat to have. The kids fill out those little slips with their right. towns, so mm -hmm. you'd, be, you'd, oh, yeah. you'd have to probably manually go through that. But they have library cards where you get to check it out, check out the books <coughs> somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That's, That's something our scholarship uh, recipient can do, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm done otherwise. Any other comments or questions regarding the director's report? Okay, we're going to move on to old business, the annual fund drive letter update. It is being printed as we speak. I should have the copies hope, tomorrow, and they will go in the mail um, either Saturday or early next week. Okay. Um, they're um, after talking with the guy a little bit. The, we went with. Uh, uh, David Muse, who printed the Lyceum programs, mm -hmm. they're going to be, it's a two-sided, eight and a half by 11, without an envelope that will be folded. It's color. We've got pictures of the library, the new library on it. Um, it, it will be, so it's all, I, he sent me an email today saying that he was going to deliver them tomorrow, so they might be here tomorrow or at my house. And then we have to to we meaning me and probably Sarah if she'll help break them into postal routes so we okay. have to take and put the right number in eight different boxes to send to the post office and okay. deliver it to the post office with a check <coughs> that's, that's the letter right it's it's more or less that right um, it's, so it's, on better, better paper. it's on it's on glossy paper okay. um, glossy thicker paper and it might be colored a little different but okay. other than that it's that letter um, it's it's printed in color. Um, I think we went with a. It's not. It's dark gray, almost black color. But the like the logos will be in that color and things like that. So we got rid of the red. Okay. Thanks for doing that, Mark. Yes. I'm not sure how to ask the question, but like for instance, is that to me that's blurry. That's not going to end up. Nope. That's the that's the printer. Okay. That's what I thought. So. So. <laughs> Is it going to be impossible to read, Mark? Because that would be an so. It's it's an eight and a half by eleven sheet that will be trifolded. Yeah. On the inside will be the text of the letter. Okay. On the one fold will be the tear off. Yeah. Nice. Um, on another fold will be the mailing address, and on the third fold on the back will be two pictures of the new building. Fine. Lovely. Okay. And. He was significantly less expensive it's than my pricing out with ISS and Blue Bumble. Um, going with a parity to what we've done in past years, so it this this is a I don't know the exact number, but I think it was around eight hundred dollars, a little less than eight hundred dollars plus postage, which is less than four hundred dollars. Right. It's three. It's either three eighty two or three twenty eight. I don't remember the number. Right. So um, crazy so. difference. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was obscene. So expect it in your mailbox late next week. Excellent. Sounds great. All right. New business. Posting for a new library trustee discussion. discussion. So um, as you may have noticed, we are one member shy on our board due to personal reasons and obligations to family, Katie Carruth has resigned from the position of Library Board of Trustee, um, which leaves a vacancy. I just wanted to take a, a moment to acknowledge the service that Katie has done for this board. She put in a tremendous amount of research, time, energy, and passion into the new building project. She really pushed forward a lot of the energy um, in the different committees that we currently have right now in order to get this building project on its feet and out to the community and she will be greatly missed. I don't know if anybody else would like to add anything uh, regarding
Katie. Thank you. So said it very well. Okay. Yeah, that was very well said. Very well said. And we'll miss her. So with that in mind, we <coughs> now currently have a vacancy on our board, which if you go to the town's website, um, the information regarding the requirements to fulfill that vacancy is listed. So if anybody watching is interested in sitting on the board and working in protecting the rights of the library and pushing forward this new building project, they can go to the town's website and follow the instructions and guidelines to uh, apply to fill that vacancy. On Monday, November 5th, the library trustees and the board of selectmen will be meeting at 730 to interview interested candidates for this vacancy and we will vote on who we feel is the best selection for our board. We do have some people in mind currently, right? And then there's other. I, I know of people that are. I've mentioned it to people who are pulling people who will fill out the application. So. Did anyone else want to? Just well, just to make it clear that that's it's it ends up being an elected position. So you're filling a vacancy that mm -hmm. will end up. Uh, Ending and have to run for re-election. So the yes. So the way so there's an application mm -hmm. online or in the town clerk's mm -hmm. office that you that has to be filled out and submitted to the selectmen probably or by the beginning of November, October 31st. Yes. I was going to guess November, November 1st. So it was pretty close. Yeah. Um, and then you'll be asked to come to the <coughs> selectmen's meeting on November 5th, where the selectmen and the trustees mm -hmm. will interview all of the candidates, and then uh, and then you'll be voted in. Whoever's voted in then has to go get sworn in and there'll be uh, a normal member of our board through the May election time frame when there will be um, a, a, a vote um, just like the normal trustees there will be a term of for the rest of Katie's um, terms of one year. So again, for um, anybody watching, the deadline to apply for that vacancy is October 31st. You can find the application online or you could go to the town clerk. And please be prepared to come to the Board of Selectmen meeting on Monday, November 5th at 7.30 to um, be interviewed publicly on camera. Is there anything else that anyone would like to add regarding the vacancy? No. Okay. So we're going to move on to... Oh, you know, oh, actually, sorry. I would. Sorry. Um, I think that what has been part of a screening question that's traditionally been asked um, is, okay, you're going to fill the vacancy until the election. Do you have an expectation to pull nomination papers and run for a term of office? So um, I had a uh, um, candid conversation with someone who said, oh, I was thinking I would just check it out, and if it felt okay, I would then consider running in the spring. And I said, um, for us, we don't want someone just to be a warm body at the table for, you know, from the day you're appointed until May and then leave. We want someone who's going to commit to a term of service thereafter. So for people who are considering trying it out but have no interest in putting their name on a ballot, um, that will probably be a disqualifying uh, aspect if, if there are two candidates, one who is willing to run for office on the ballot and one who is not. So throw that out there. That was a good point, Jenna. Thank you. Um, November meeting date. Now, and again, Jenna had mentioned that we will be having our next trustee meeting bef and, and I have to apologize. I don't have my phone on me, so I do not have my calendar. We're scheduled um, to meet on the 1st. On the 1st. So that, yes, so that will be before we choose our um, applicant to fill the vacancy on the 5th. So Jenna had recommended that we 
move our meeting to after November 5th so our new trustee can start right away. meeting immediately, yes. So that would be November 8th. So, yes, we were looking at November 8th. This yes. room is available, LCTV. Right. Do we need a motion for that or we just say to do it? I make a motion we change our regular meeting date in November from the 1st to the 8th. Second. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so we will be meeting on November 8th at... Oh, I'm sorry. Just one more thing. Yes. Um, so we have, we also have to submit um, the next year's budget okay. by October 31st. All right. So we may need to meet before October 31st. Okay. Is this a we need to need <laughs> or we need to meet? Well, it has to be approved by the trustees. Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thank you well, for let's, that back, let's back up to uh, October. So, I, we're, well, so November is set then, right? Yes. Okay. So, so we have approved to meet at 7 p.m. on Thursday, November 8th, for our regular November trustee meeting. Now we will need to vote upon meeting sometime before October 31st to approve the budget. We don't need to vote on the meeting. You can just call a meeting. Okay. Um, what would work for folks? Can we do the 25th of October? Likely the 25th, which is a Thursday. As of now, I do not think I have anything on the 25th, so that is good for me as well. Is this like a long approval meeting or like a just like a approval, <laughs> so quick approval? <laughs> I was just trained today because it's in our favorite software program, Munis, that we have to do it now. So today I was trained on how to enter everything into Munis. I've done payroll for next year already. I just have to work on um, basically the expenses like books and so forth. And then I also have to work on the mission budget. And um, we also have to figure out what we're going to do as far as capital and what we're going to ask. We should for. have more of it. Right. Okay. So um, I will have everything for you by next week and mm -hmm. then as far as capital goes um, that's up to you, what you guys want to do so how long do you need after our meeting to get ready so if we met on the 25th, 25th. You, would be, you would be fine for the 31st yeah to take everything mm -hmm. yeah and if we 25th is open for me but how much time do we like is it like a regular length meeting or is it a quick I'm guessing an like hour an or hour? less right? Like, I mean, right so well, I'll send it to you all next week okay. and so you'll have time to review it and then by the time the 25th comes you can yeah. you think it would be uh, a seven o'clock start time works best sure, that works okay. for me. Works for I'd rather do it at 630 but that's fine with me I can do 630 I, can 630. Do I have to see if this room is, or what room is available and I can well, do six thirty as well. Oh, is that not, it's not a regular meeting, though. Right? No, this is to discuss the budget, uh, the budget right. and to approve it. Can we do that in the small meeting room? If well, it's the camera. If well, if we Amy's trained. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She's whether we have to do it on camera or not, right? So we, I mean, if we're doing it at six thirty and we're done by seven thirty, if we say six thirty to seven thirty, we'll get out before any most any other meeting so you could even do like the police station or if there's a s school committee meeting because they I mean we can work around we can we yeah. can be done before their meeting if it, mm -hmm. right if if they need the room at seven maybe we start at six or something right we can mm -hmm. probably figure that out right yeah. so. so we do not need to vote for that. you just so you can call a meeting whenever you want to enter the chair and I will right. let you know where. <laughs> right. All right, so Thursday, October 25th, we will be meeting at 6.30. At this time, we aren't exactly sure where, but we will uh, be televising it. Okay. Um, T-shirt funds for upcoming stuffed animal sleepover program. Right, so um, I believe Janice said she's going to look at what we have yeah um, but I do have the invoice from last year yeah and we spent nine hundred and thirty six dollars um, how many shirts are that <sighs> there were sorry 18 <laughs> um, does anybody remember if we ran out of any particular sizes I was gonna check that okay. yeah so 156 shirts 156 in various sizes. Right. Yeah, I can um, I can pick through and count what we have left and compare it against this. And yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Jean had some ideas on uh, sizes too because she was involved with distributing some of those um, shirts from last year, so she might have some okay. information on what we ran short on. All right. Do we have uh, a date? We don't have a date for that program yet. I don't believe so. So do we want to vote up to $1,000 to do that again? or? Let's glow in the dark paint <coughs> this time, and your wife would like to do the design for it. So if she's going to put like a lot of design, that could be a lot of paint. You think it's more to do I a lot know. of paint? I don't know. I'm just teasing shirt. you. And we could actually offer these yeah. at a discount. Sure. It could be glow in the dark for 15 and last year's retro shirt for 10 or something. So I'll make a motion we allocate up to $1,000 per t-shirts for the Read Past My Bedtime event. Second that. From the MMDT uh, building fund. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Second. Yep, I did. Yep. Okay, I'll do that then. Before I close the meeting, is there anything Anyone would like to add or bring up for discussion? Um, the only thing that I'd like to say with respect to our lovely candidates is that this year we um, have had more candidates than we've ever had. When I saw Sam on the first and said, how many candidates do we have? And he said, zero. zero. Uh, it was saddening to me. I mean, despite the fact that I was aware of at least one coming in, it was lovely to learn that we had these four and another candidate um, who's already been interviewed. So I think it may be a reflection of the value that these young people see in our library. And I don't know if it's worthwhile for us to consider I mean, I've heard you say, uh, candidate, one of you, um, we've awarded the scholarship to more than one person in the past, or at least we've said, okay, you three who have just been interviewed, you clearly are far too busy and won't have time to do it, but you two sound like you are. You both may make an effort toward doing the, the service, and um, to that end, they were, they were both permitted to, to make a go at it. I'm not sure that all four of them, if it would be sensible to have four senior high school so students. Right now we're kind of at capacity as far as volunteers because of um, the seniors that are, there were, there were a lot of seniors this year that applied, so a okay. lot of the seniors do work, work senior stuff for us. Yep. So uh, we're kind of just looking for one. Uh, oh, okay. One uh, volunteer, or okay. one scholarship. All right. Person. All right. So yeah. if what might be possible, and I, I don't know, this would have to be run by Sam and Andy too, is to reduce the requirement from 150 hours to 100 and give it to two. So you have 200 hours, right? What do you, um, and, and do it that way, right? That might work, but to say 300 hours, I think they will be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And that would also be less stressful for the kids too. They'd have yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Less to do. So but right. then there's also the deciding factor of how much money is available in the scholarship fund to give to them. Do you give them each the yeah. full amount, so, or do you so split we, it up? Yeah, that would be part of the discussion, right? If we're right. saying two at fewer hours, right. you cut the amount by right. whatever. So. Oh. Or not, which, which may, you know, I'm not speaking for the four candidates, but if they got their amount slashed in half, you know, maybe, maybe they wouldn't be interested anymore. So, but I'm not speaking for those four candidates. But some sometimes people feel that way that they 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 want the full amount and they don't want to share it. So. Okay. Right. All very good points. Do we need to establish another meeting time to make that? I was going to ask decision? what our procedure is going to be for making the decision. Do you, do you want to wait until the 25th to yeah. discuss yeah. it? Yeah. And in the meanwhile, you think it over. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, 
So therefore, our um, next meeting is going to be Thursday, November 8th at 7 p.m. No, uh, October, October 25th. Uh, it's October, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm Thursday. Getting ahead of my head. Okay, so October tw Thursday, October 25th, 7 p.m. 6.30. 6 6.30. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. He changed that at the last second. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday. October 25th at 6.30, and then on Thursday, November 8th at 7 p.m. Actually, no, it's Monday, November oh. 5th at 7.30. Yes. Because okay. we have to post that as a meeting, too. So we have to... You know that we're Let me just write this down and yeah. just repeat this again. So we will be meeting okay. on, on Thursday, October 25th, 25th. at 6.30. Uh, yeah. Place to be decided. Then the Monday, uh, November 5th, with the Board of Selectmen at the Board of Selectmen meeting at 7.30. And then again on Thursday, November 8th at 7 p.m. in this room, 307. At 7. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's November 5th time? 7.30. 7.30 with the Board of Selectmen. And the 8th, oh, we're seven November 8th, 8th, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what time we're on. I don't know. We're, 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 we're nothing if not consistent. Not <laughs> okay. Are we done? Yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All, All those favor? in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye.